In this video, we would discuss how to find the position of elements in the periodic table. In order to do that, we need to write the electronic configuration of elements. Once you know the atomic number of an element, you can ri start writing the electronic configuration of the same. You know that you can write in both forms of SPDF and KLMN. We will start writing in both the forms so that you know how to go about it either ways. Now here are the rules you need to keep in mind. Let us start the KLMN form. First thing that we need to do is to write the electronic configuration. After we do that, we have to observe the number of shells and the valence electrons. The number of shells would tell you the period of the element, while the number of valence electrons would indicate the group of the element. Let us take the example of sodium with atomic number 11 and the electronic configuration of 2, 8, 1. We know that the number of shells tells us the period. Here we have three shells. So this element would belong to the third period. In this case, the number of valence electrons equal to 1. For groups, here is a simple trick. When the number of valence electrons is 1 or 2, it would correspond to group 1 and 2 respectively. When the number of valence electrons is 3 or more, we find the group number by adding 10 to it. So we, the group number would be 10 plus the number of valence electrons. Now coming back to sodium with atomic number 11 and the electronic configuration 281. We know that the number of shells correspond to the period. And in this case, it has three shells. That means it is in the third period. Now to look for the group number. We would look at the number of valence electrons, which in this case is 1. So the group number would be 1 because we know that for number of valence electrons 1 and 2, the group numbers correspond. Now, sodium is an element which belongs to group 1 and period 3. Similarly, now let us try for phosphorus with atomic number 15. We know the electronic configuration is 285. And now it has three shells. So the period would be 3. And now for the group, we see that the number of valence electrons is 5. So according to the rule, we go 10 plus valence electrons, which is 10 plus 5, 15. Phosphorus belongs to group 15, period 3. Now let us go about finding the position of elements by writing the SPDF configuration. Let us take the example of aluminium with atomic number 13. And the configuration for it is 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p1. Looking at the configuration of the last electron which is filled in 3p1, we can immediately tell the position of an element. So in this case, n equal to 3 and there is one electron in p sub level. So it is in third period and the first group in the p block, that is group 13 in the periodic table. Or to go about the traditional way. So now to look at the valence electron, which is the number of electrons in the valence shell n equal to 3. And the exponent values 2 and 1 add up to the total number of valence electrons making it 3. And we know that the principal quantum numbers value is the number of shells. And the number of shells gives us the value of the period. So in this case, n value would give you the period value and it is 3. For group, again we see that we have 3 valence electrons. So it would be 10 plus 3 which would be 13. Or we can also see that it is in the first group of P block. 
Now, to find the location of a transition element, I have written the configurations of scandium as 2883 in KLMN form and with the final electron in 3D1 in SPDF form. Looking at the last electron, which is there in the 3D1 sublevel, we know that it is a member of the first group of d orbital. If we look at the periodic table, we have groups 1 and 2 in S block, 3 to 12 in D block, and 13 to 18 in P block. In D block, the electronic configuration goes from 3D1 to 3D10. In this case, the configuration is at 3D1, so it is in group 3, and the valence shell is n equal to 4, which tells us that it is in the fourth period. If we were to look at the KLM form, and we see that the number of valence electrons is 3. To find the position, we would go 10 plus 3 equal to 13, which would be a member of a P block, and that would be wrong. This is why Bohr's representations don't work for atomic numbers greater than 20, and we have to go with SPDF form. Now to find the position of argon with electronic configuration 288. We see that the number of valence electrons is 8 and according to the rule, group number would be 10 plus number of valence electrons. That would be 18 in this case. For the period, we look at the number of shells and in this case we have 3 shells and it would belong to the third period. Let us try for carbon with atomic number 6 and electronic configuration 1s2, 2s2, 2p2. The period number would be the highest value of the valence shell which is indicated by n and in this case it is n equal to 2 so period is 2. For the group number we look at the number of valence electrons which is 2 plus 2 in both s and p orbitals that is 10 plus 4 and we have the 14th group if i were to write it in klm form the configuration would have been 2 comma 4 so again we have two shells and four valence electrons so it would belong to period 2 group 10 plus 4 that is 14 happy learning